Hello again, Gary Stearman. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy Watchers. With me, author, lecturer, and biblical thinker, L.A. Marzulli. Always on the cutting edge. L.A., thanks for coming by. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Gary. L.A. Marzulli, uh, well, let me just start by saying I've got eight DVDs here, Watchers 1 through 8. A lot of you are familiar with those. I have seven DVDs here. And let me just, L.A., start by reading the titles mm -hmm. on some of these. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this one is UFO Disclosure, The Alien Gospel, A Field ma a Manual to Spiritual Warfare, uh, The Alien Abduction Phenomenon, <clears throat> Signs of the End Times, Alien Agenda 1, Alien Agenda 2, Prophecies Being Fulfilled in Our Lifetime. You know, a lot of people take the view, L.A., that we're not seeing prophecy being fulfilled in our day. That is, eschatologically mm -hmm. speaking, they say, no, the Old Testament prophets looked ahead, but they looked ahead at a time slightly ahead of us, so that we're not seeing those prophecies being fulfilled today. And so if you say that prophecy is being fulfilled today, you sort of open your, yourself up to a little criticism. And, and that's fine, but when we look at what uh, Jesus warns us of, would be signs of the last days, specifically from Matthew 24, wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome times. When we just look at the earthquakes in diverse places, when he writes that 2,000 years ago, there's no way to ascertain if an earthquake happens of 9.0 magnitude outside mm -hmm. of Fukushima Prefecture in Japan and you live in Israel, how are you ever going to know that? Well, in the modern age, we watch that in, literally in, at, at, at the speed of live through the satellite network. Right. We watch the tsunami come in and, and destroy and wipe out uh, the Fukushima Prefecture. We, we see these things in real time. Think of the Ebola virus. Think of the wars and rumors of wars. Think of the prophecy that states Jerusalem would be a burdensome stone. Surely we can look at, no one cared about Jerusalem 150 years ago. Now it's on the front page of every paper almost every single day. There's something about this tension between the Palestinians um, and Hamas and Hezbollah and the nation of Israel. I believe that prophecy is being fulfilled right, around, right under our noses. A mutual friend of ours, Bill Salas, the Psalm 83 war. Certainly when we look at Hezbollah in the north, Hamas in Gaza, now ISIL creeping in from Iraq. Who would have imagined ISIL four or five years ago? And now in this area, this, this, these renegades, these, these basically thugs are beheading Christians. 250,000 Christians have fled Iraq. And we are looking, in my opinion, I haven't even factored Iran in there yet uh, with their um, goal to basically wipe Israel off the map. Yeah. We are looking at uh, Bill Salas's, which what I would, you know, point people to that book, The Psalm 83 War, because that's what Israel has to act and they have to do it soon because they are surrounded by those who pose an existential threat to her. And this is why the, the prophetic stage is, is ready to go. It's set and ready to go. Now let me add to that because there are some today who would say, uh, if you look for signs in the heavens, uh, you're doing something that's really not condoned. It's not quite legal to look for signs in the heavens because you might misinterpret what you see. And that would include the sun, moon, stars, and may I say, mysterious lights that appear and disappear. And, and since, uh, well, really since 1897, for those who have studied the phenomenon, and then in particular since 1948, mm -hmm. there is a phenomenon. And I'm going to read the title again on one of L.A.'s uh, uh, DVDs. By the way, these are all L.A. speaking to audiences, and he has a style that's inimitable. It is uh, free-swinging, it's entertaining, but absolutely packed with biblical knowledge. The title on this one, UFO Disclosure, The Alien Gospel. Now, some would say, does that have any place in church at all? The alien gospel? Really, L.A.? Come on, is there an alien gospel? Oh, there is, and we see it promulgated by people like Richard Dawkins, uh, one of the premier evolutionists of the 20th, 21st century. He sits down with Ben Stein and what I would now consider a classic film, Expel, No Intelligence Allowed. Stein asks Dawkins, where does life, where did this first self-replicating molecule come from? Dawkins fidgets in his chair and says, well, no one really knows. And Stein throws him an intellectual life. And, well, how could it have happened? And, and Dawkins then promulgates and espouses what I would come to call 
the, the coming great deception or the alien gospel. And he basically, the summation of it is this, that millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> a group of extraterrestrials who have, had to right. arrive at a very high level of civilization by some sort of Darwinian process created life and then seeded us through uh, the galaxies. And presto changeo, here we are on Earth. Panspermia. Panspermia. And this is what he believes and this is what the movies and Prometheus Entertainment, with all due respect, on the History Channel, the Ancient Aliens uh, series, now in its seventh uh, season. I was on the first two seasons, and this is one of the reasons why we started to watch this series, because we couldn't, we couldn't really get our story told. Um, they have an agenda, and it's the ancient astronaut theorist. This all hinges on the Darwinian paradigm, and Christians need to understand what's at stake here that everything hinges on the Darwinian paradigm. If there is no God, then how did we get here? That Darwinism creates this intellectual and spiritual vacuum in people. And that's why the movie Prometheus several years ago, this, this rich industrialist goes out in space to find his creator. That's what he's looking for. Well, we know who our creator is. All we need to do is read the Gospel of John. All things were made by him. It's talking about Jesus. And without him, nothing that was made was made. So we know the source of creation. And, you know, people, oh, that's just, that's uh, a silly story. It's mythos. Well, but what about the mythos of Dawkins, who says millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away, a race, he's just making this stuff up. And he doesn't know. He's tacitly admitting that there are aliens traveling around out there, sure. and they are seeding the galaxy with their seed, which brings me to a biblical theme. Uh, it, the, the Bible begins with the story of the seed of the woman mm -hmm. and, and the seed of the Redeemer and, and all about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, th th we have the battle of Satan's seed versus the seed of the woman being one of the major Bible themes. And you're talking about seed uh, from the uh, secular point of view. They believe in panspermia that uh, somebody out there in the galaxy flung some seed into the and universe. Here we are. It landed on planet Earth and it sprouted up. <laughs> and wow, you really have to have faith to believe that. But one. this is what's at stake. We are we are in a culture war, and Christians need to begin to push back. And there are there are some of those, with all due respect. Who would, who would muzzle any type of dialogue and just sit in the four walls of a church and hunker down and not address this stuff. We have the answers because we have the Bible and we believe that it's the Word of God. And why would Jesus warn us that men would faint from fear from what is coming upon the earth? What could that possibly mean? It's, it's coming upon the earth from outside the earth's atmosphere. Could it be a UFO? Could it be a mile-wide uh, mothership? Could it be a comet? Could it be a, a huge solar flare? What is it? Why would Jesus warn us that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> why would he, why would he, and all the things he could, why not just tell us, and in the end days your mortgages will be paid and everyone will drive the car of their dreams. That's not what he says. He says the elect would be deceived if that were possible. And then Paul, and you've heard me talk about this ad, ad nauseum, Paul tag teams onto that and basically says, look, Satan, the fallen cherub, is going to come with all signs and lying wonders. When we put those in a cosmic blender and mix them all up, guess what? Welcome to the, uh, 2014 going into 2015. And Satan, we're here. Ha just happens to be the prince of the power of, power the, of air, the air. Which means that all those weird things you see floating around up there in the air that people talk about now, and, and, and they're being reported in the hundreds as we speak. Actually the thousands. Uh, you're, you're right. Yeah. Uh, and, and it a used lot. to be maybe 20 or 30. A month, and, and a now month. It's, it's exponential. And we're seeing an exponential rise in UFO sightings, and people try to brush that undercover because nobody wants to talk about that. That is not real stuff. That's just kind of somebody's imagination. No, it's not. The Bible actually talked about the prince of the power of the air mm -hmm. and uh, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness in heavenly places, etc. And so you're going out with that message. Absolutely. And, you know, what's interesting is, is when you have someone from one of the G8 nations, Paul Hellyer, the former defense minister of the Canadian government, go on the record and state and in and, and, and a, and a very you know, non-emotional way, just state emphatically that UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying overhead. Now, a, a modicum of research into the phenomena will show that it is real, it is burgeoning, and not going away. And the church needs to wake up and, and get off the anti-supernatural bandwagon 
and begin to look at some of these things. Remember, we're the people that believe in the virgin birth, talking donkeys, floating axe heads, Indeed. two gold coins that appear out of fish's mouth, staff which turns into serpents, you know, rocks that gush water that can, that can quench the thirst of millions of people. In we the believe desert. in miracles. We believe in miracles. Where does it say that somehow all the supernatural stuff has stopped? In fact, it doesn't do that. Paul admonishes us and warns us that in the latter days, in the latter days, Satan will come with all signs and lying wonders. And so be, we're here. In other words, Christians should be talking about these things because they are prophesied. But the interpretation of the Bible has been uh, a supernatural, shall we say, to coin a word. Mm -hmm. Let's push the supernatural back because it's too confusing. It, it, it scares might, people. It scares, it scares people and so forth. Uh, UFO disclosure, the alien gospel. And by the way, let's before I get away from that, let's talk about the word disclosure. People, since Roswell, I suppose, people have been talking about the government knows. You know, the government is keeping secrets, and there's this agency, and there's this Area 51 out here's the black budget, mm -hmm. and sure. on and on sure. and on. And then other people will say, well, <clears throat> someday uh, someone will stand up in government and disclose. They will tell the truth. Yes, we, your government, we've been keeping this a secret all these years because. We believe that you wouldn't have the strength to take such a disclosure, and so we've been waited for the proper moment. And everybody talks about disclosure. Uh, how does that fit in your uh, eschatology? Well, I think when that happens, um, that it, it, and it may fall on the heels of an event. For instance, if there's a nuclear event on the planet, because the planet now is wired together, through the satellites and the internet. Everything is wired up. We're synced together. We watch the Fukushima tidal wave come in in real time as to illustrate, go back to a point that I talked about earlier. If we have a nuclear event on this planet, it will cause and create the greatest fear that humanity has experienced collectively since the beginning of history. This is a perfect time for the Space Brothers to show up. Mile-wide craft someplace. And people, oh, LA, that's absurd. People, pilots, radar. I mean, a modicum of research will show, and this is what further evidence in our, in our Watcher series is about, all this stuff. It's, it's not pie in the sky. We actually have real physical you know, evidence and film and all this other you know, hardcore scientific data that shows something is happening. You get a mile-wide craft showing up, all bets are off. Unless a person knows what they're looking at, our priori, before the event happens, they can so easily be deceived. And that calls back, in my mind, the words of Jesus, who says, who tells us, warns us, uh, that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. So what is coming is unprecedented. And, and, yes. and, and remember, Paul says that God sends them strong delusion because they did not believe the truth. And the truth goes back to the earlier statement in the Gospel of John. All things were made by him. And, and what is the, the prevailing paradigm on a global level? Darwinism. So that the, earth, the world has turned away from the truth, the truth being that he, the Most High God, created everything through his son, Yeshua, Jesus. We've turned our back, not we, but the collectively humankind has turned their back, embraced the Darwinian paradigm. Guess what? God is going to give us what we want. Okay, fine. Here's this, here comes the strong delusion, which will be crafted by the fallen one, which will then they'll turn stand everything up upside and say, down. We are your creators. That's right. Wow. And, and of course, that false god, uh, it, it will be the one who stands behind the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And we find that in Daniel, uh, when Daniel describes the rise of the, of the uh, willful king, the man of sin. Sure. We find it in Revelation. And so there has to be a power behind the throne when the Antichrist rises, and you see that being uh, laid out right now. I do. I really do. I, I think that we're in the window of time where the stage is being set for all this. You know, this year on the Super Bowl 2015, Katy Perry is going to do the halftime show, and I'm willing to bet that one of her, this, one of her centerpieces of the halftime show will be the E.T. song. We'll see. I have no idea what she's going to do, and I'm not prophesying here. But it'd be very interesting if she yeah. does do the E.T. song, read those lyrics, watch the video, pray before and after you see the video. But this is what the kids are watching. This is what your daughter, your son, your granddaughter, your grandson already know. They they can, they can mouth all the lyrics. Trust me, they can. They know oh, the video. Yeah. They sing along with it. And, it. and what it's talking about, what she is promulgating, um, you know, ready for, this is some of the lyrics, ready for abduction, fill me with your poison. 
That this isn't. I want to hold your hand anymore. This is a whole different deal. It's a different world. It's now. a different world. Well, I have eight DD, DVDs here, uh, Watchers one through eight. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have watched at least one of these DVDs. I've got the whole set right here, and uh, right here on the Prophecy Watchers website, you can see how to order them. In fact, if you want to order any single. Uh, a Watchers uh, uh, DVD, you can do that, but I'd recommend the whole set. If you buy the whole set, I've got a bonus of seven uh, DVDs. This is my own personal set, can't have this, but and I, <laughs> <laughs> I watch these. They're very informative, and I find them inspiring because this is a confusing society in which we live today. It's a society that tries to tell us that everything's all right. Just keep walking straight ahead. It's all wonderful, and we're all going to take care of it for you. And you look at it, and you see it falling apart. It's a time when people are looking for reality. They're looking for answers. Uh, I think you have some answers for people, uh, particularly in the area of the supernatural, which has been spurned by the church as illegal. <clears throat> Uh, we have here a DVD called Signs of the End Times. Let's see, we have, oh, Alien Agenda 1 and Alien Agenda 2. Let's talk about that. What would the Alien Agenda be? We've laid the groundwork mm -hmm. up to now. Mm -hmm. And that was an interesting conversation, three-way between Tom Horn, yourself, and, and myself. That's and right. We were discussing um, the end time scenario uh, with the so-called extraterrestrial presence, which, of course, all three of us believe that this is the presence of the fallen angelic host masquerading as ET. These are highly intelligent but malevolent interdimensional beings, not extraterrestrial beings, interdimensional beings, who, when they appear, will tell us that, one, this falls right in with the whole Darwinian paradigm and what, what we talked about a little earlier, Dawkins is promulgating. One, they will tell us that they created all life on this planet, that they seeded it here. Two, that they manipulated early man. Three, that they started the world's earliest civilizations, religions, and now at this critical juncture in human history, probably after some sort of cataclysmic event like a nuclear exchange yeah. someplace, we, E.T., are back with, with um, uh, a, a not only knowledge, but a DNA upgrade for humanity. And all you need to do is take this little chip, which you know, will just implant, you won't even feel a thing, and you will live maybe 500 years, maybe longer, disease-free. And you know, L.A., this propaganda started all the way back in the 60s. <clears throat> Stanley Kubrick, you remember 2001, sure. A Space mm -hmm. Odyssey, uh, where an astronaut goes out into outer space uh, because... An artifact is discovered on the surface of the moon, suggesting that man's progenitors left a sign there, and that sign should be followed into outer space so that man could seek his origins. That was back in the early 60s, mm -hmm. folks, and that was a propaganda piece. Absolutely. As far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And, and we've, we've seen the outgrowth of that. This changed the way people are thinking. No, it has. And then from that, you get the movie Prometheus several years ago, which basically yeah. touched on exactly the same idea that, um, and I mentioned that, this man, and a man goes out looking for his creator, looking for his progenitor. Um, and Prometheus, the movie, that's what it's promulgating. Yeah. And, and this all hinges on Darwinism. It, 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 what it does is it, is it steers the viewer um, away from the biblical narrative and, and points out there to the source of life on planet Earth. And when we think about the complex, you know, the Bible tells us very simply that we were made in the image and likeness of God. And when we look at the complexity of the human being and how all these systems work independently of each other, just one, one system, we look at the circulatory system and the miracle of the heart. How does the heart develop by itself I mean, and, and, and show me one transitory animal. They always show this, this, you know, sort of a chimpanzee walking almost upright, and then poof, he's there. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's the biggest bunch of horse bucky. There is no transitory um, animal. Man is there. And, and they, no matter what they find, a tooth, one tooth, well, it must, it must look like this. And they draw some ape man or something and try to tell us that this is what we look like. They don't have a clue. And we know... Watson and Crick discovered this. We know from the DNA that the oxyribonucleic acid, the double helix of life, that 
This is a complex message system which creates everything according to its own kind. Hummingbirds beget hummingbirds, humpback whales beget humpback whales. And men and women produce children who are men, not chimeras, not satires, not anything else. Mm -hmm. Now you can go in there and mess with the DNA, which is what's happening now, the whole transhumanism um, idea, which is now coming. And who would have imagined that 50 or 60 years ago? So DNA is the building blocks of life. It's miraculous. And the co-discoverer of a crick was a vexed man. Because when he looked at this, right. he realized <clears throat> that no yeah. matter how many billions of years of just chance and prebiotic sop that you got, there's no way this thing is just going to evolve. And Francis Crick later wrote a book in which he said DNA could not have evolved. Therefore, uh, let me propose an explanation. <clears throat> and it's those guys out there. Those guys it's the out whole there. It's the whole thing. There have to again. be superior races yes. who visited Earth in one way or another and brought their seed to us. Which brings me to the Bible. <clears throat> Daniel the prophet. Hmm. If anybody has authority, if, if ever a prophet had authority, it was Daniel. And, and you, you literally hang on every syllable of Daniel's prophecy. And, and when he uh, writes the prophecy of the progress of uh, the Gentile empires, he talks about the, uh, the empires resembling a huge statue, a head, a chest, belly, legs, and mm -hmm. if you get down to the feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says in Daniel 2.42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron, part of clay, so... Uh, the kingdom uh, shall be partly strong and partly broken, whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay or brittle clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Those of us who have studied this, L.A., see this they as an external race, I external agree. to the human race, mm -hmm. mingling their seed with the seed of men, they, they shall not be successful, according to Daniel's prophecy, but they're going to do it for a while. It says he, they will do it. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of man to try to create a corrupt uh, genome, if you will. Mm -hmm. What happened in the book of Genesis? The very same thing. So Genesis tells us the past. Daniel tells us the future. It's as simple as black and white on paper. And yet there's such resistance to this there within is. the church and people won't look at this. And this is why unless we go back and understand uh, the mandate essentially from the Most High God in Genesis 3 where he says your, you know, your seed will be at enmity with the seed of the woman. And he's talking about the fallen cherub, Satan himself. Your seed is going to be at enmity with the seed of the woman. We have a seed war. And then when we go to Genesis 6, we see the manifestation of that seed war all through the Bible. And then when we get to Daniel, we get a future glimpse of what it's going to be. And the work of Jim Willinson um, and talking about that word cleave goes back to the Genesis 6 account when they're given in marriage. It's the same Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. But here it says they will not cleave to them. What is fascinating about this, and we have, we've discussed this, we've talked about it in our Watchers series, it goes back and Chuck Missler came on the record and stated emphatically that Satan is outnumbered two to one. He is building an army. This ties into what we believe is the so-called alien abduction phenomena where people are taken, sperm are taken from the men, ovum from the women. I have spoken with numerous people who have had these claims. And I can tell you that they are broken, for the most part, they are broken, disillusioned, shock-shelled, individuals. And part of our ministry is helping these people get a grip on it. And of course, we, we lead them to Jesus because that's what they need. Now, there's a Christian watching this right now who's saying, oh, no, 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 L.A., you've gone too far. What would you say to that individual? I would say, do, do your homework. You know, if, if I've gone too far, you know, you do the homework. You go out there and, and, and do a modicum of research and uh, uh, anyone will see that the phenomena is real. People are being taken. There are people at conferences, there may be people in your church who have been abducted and are too ashamed to talk about it because of, the, of what happens. If, if you're a female, eggs are taken. If you're a male, sperm is taken. Sometimes you're forced to have sex with a hybrid being. We actually have a hair, which we talked about in our Watches series, talk about it in Amitrail, uh Volume 2, which was incredible. We had Raman spectroscopy done 
from a hair, from an alien, what we believe was a hybrid being. It was, almo- it was almost white and transparent. And we took a hair, a red hair, from one of the skulls from Paracas, and we put them under Raman spectroscopy. We had two control samples, a dyed human hair and a normal human hair. Those, the, the dyed human hair went like this on the graph. The human hair went like this. Well, the, the, the hybrid hair... Okay, and the red hair from Paracas went like this. The slopes mimicked each other. They they were mirror image of each other throughout both, the graph. Uh, both of non-human, non-human. Alien, that's what we believe it is. Stock. That's what we believe it is. And yes. so there is a, if you will, breeding program. Going There's a breeding on. program, and the Bible tells us that. Now, if we twist the words in Daniel, we we will never come to that conclusion. But if we look at what you know the text says, their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to them. Hard to believe, and yet that's the era in which we live. You know, we read about cattle mutilations all the time. Sure. And it seems to me they're harvesting something. They are harvesting from our prized livestock. Some ranchers have gone broke because so, so many of their cattle have been true. taken. Which is true, absolutely. And, uh, but various select portions of the animals are taken, suggesting to me that they're using parts of these animals to synthesize something, a creature or creatures mm-hmm. that they will later use in, in attempting to uh, infiltrate us. Sounds like sci-fi, but when you read the Bible, it's there, L.A. No, it is, and, and that's why we tenaciously hold to the Word of God in a literal way, and that's why we're out here doing what we're doing, not only warning people about the prophecies, but then giving real hardcore physical evidence that this stuff is going on. Watchers 8. Uh, very authoritative documentary of just what you're talking about. And a picture's worth a thousand words, a DVD is worth a million words. <laughs> You've said it. You've given the story. You feel called to deliver this message, which you consider to be a uh, Christian message for the latter days. Absolutely. Most definitely. You know, we talk about things sometimes that are not condoned in classical theology. Our era is changing exponentially. That's what Daniel said. He said, knowledge shall increase. Increase. Boy, did he ever hit hit it on the head there. Uh, Technology that's 10 years old today is prehistoric. It's dead. What used to be a a supercomputer 10 years ago is now a kid's toy today. (laughs) (laughs) And all of that is going together Uh, inexorably to create a controlled society under one man. And that guy is the Antichrist, and he's going to be back to the hilt by the very beings you're talking about. I concur. I agree. I think that the alien or that the uh, Antichrist will boast some sort of an alien connection. Eight DVDs, Watchers 1 through 8. You can see how to get them right here on the Prophecy Watchers website. If you buy all eight of them, now you can buy one at a time, but if you buy all eight, you get seven bonus DVDs. Wow. So much info, and you need to hear it. L.A., thanks for being here. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. It's good. And I'm Gary Stearman. Keep watching, everybody.